Is it really better to just have a bigger deposit and avoid LMI to purchase property? Or can you actually hack this and grow your property portfolio even faster? In this video, I'm gonna show an example of how you can do it with a 10% deposit as well as a 20% deposit and which one is better. And make sure to stay till the end of this video because I'm gonna share with you how you can avoid paying LMI. If you're interested, keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Now in a second here, we're gonna jump into my trusty whiteboard and go through an example of what it could look like if you were to use a 10% deposit versus a 20% deposit. Not just in today's terms, but what it could look like in the next 10 years. It's very important that we look at the long-term horizon when it comes to real estate investing. There is far too much information out there just focusing purely on what I can make today and in three months I can flip it and make more money. What we want to focus on is how do we build this passive income machine and this machine that lives there just keeps growing in the background while you continue to enjoy a balanced lifestyle. Now, If you're interested in getting help in sourcing the right properties but also having someone walk you step by step through the process from finding and negotiating on the property all the way through to settlement and finding a tenant then be sure to email me. It'll be pinned in the comments down below where we can actually discuss what search property the buyers agency I founded can actually do for you. So is a 10% deposit better or a 20%? Now as I I mentioned if we want to avoid LMI stay till the end of this video I'm going to share a couple of ways you can actually do that. Now you might be liable to pay LMI given the fact that you need a minimum 20% deposit to avoid LMI. So if you don't have that and you've got less than that you can still buy a property you just have to pay a lender's mortgage insurance. So here are two examples you've got this fancy house here on the left and if you go with an 80% LVR what this means is that this portion here which is 20% will be the deposit and the rest is made up of the loan which is 80% hence why the 80% loan to value ratio, which is what LVR means. Now, if you were to go with a 90% LVR, it just means you're putting a 10% deposit down and the rest of it, which is the 90% is made up from what the bank will give you. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So if you had $170,000 available today and you went ahead and you looked at a property for $450,000, then a 20% deposit on this would be $90,000. And if you include the costs, that would work out to be about $30,000. So your ultimate cost is gonna be $120,000 thousand dollars to go ahead and purchase this one property. Now you might be wondering where do I find a property for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars what am I looking at and that's where you can email me that's what we can discuss around the buyer's agency but what we do is focus on properties that are between 350 and 450 brick homes in Australia which yeah fascinating because you can still find them. So that would be option one but if you did go ahead and go with option two which is a 10% deposit that would mean that your outlay is only seventy five thousand dollars given that your deposit is forty five thousand dollars now and it's not the 90,000 you had in example one. Now, in this case, that would allow you to actually use the $75,000 and purchase one property, but you could go ahead and actually purchase two properties given you already have the funds available to you. If you go back to example one, you're spending $120,000 and that would not be enough for you to go ahead and purchase another one. However, in this example, what you could do is you could use 75,000 to purchase the first one. You'll have a remaining 75,000 to purchase the second one. Now, one key thing that we've missed out here is the LMI component. So you you're still having to pay LMI. Now there's two ways that you can really do this. You can pay it upfront, which we're gonna actually look at in this example, or you can actually combine it into the actual loan. This is something you should definitely talk to your lender or broker about because they can look at different options and look at your own servicing and see what option actually works better. Another rule is that if you go in with a 12% deposit, it might significantly reduce the LMI that you actually have to pay on the property. So it's worthwhile maybe having the extra 2% as a deposit. So let's look at this example. If you went ahead and you used the 20% deposit and you purchased one property at 450,000 and the other option was 10% deposit gets you two properties. That means your asset value or this machine that you're building in option one would be worth 450,000. However, in option two it would be worth 900,000 because it's twice the amount. So the question is how much will LMI actually be? Now on this, it would be about $10,000 per property. And again, it depends on your own circumstances, but you've got to ask yourself if it is $10,000 on a property worth 450 and I've got to pay that twice, is it worth paying the extra $20,000 in this example. I'm gonna give you a second to smash that like button before we continue. And with that, we'll continue. Now the thing is, we need to know what our objective is. And our number one objective is grow this machine. We're in the acquisition phase. That's why we're looking at buying property, right? It might be why you're watching this video. So if you're wanting to buy more properties and you're getting this machine to be built out as quickly as possible with the right locations, the right properties that give you rental growth and capital growth, then we need to look at both options. Now in option one, if we did go ahead at a 5% annual growth, which is quite conservative, in year one, you'd make about 22,500 in equity. But after 10 years with 
compounding growth, you're gonna make $283,000, which seems like a pretty good investment. And that too at a conservative 5% rate. However, if you go ahead and purchase the two properties for $900,000 at 5% in year one, you're making about $45,000 of equity. And after 10 years, you're gonna end up with 566,000, which means in less than 10 years by purchasing just two properties, you'd be halfway on the way to becoming a millionaire. Sounds pretty good. So we're gonna use some simple maths and really figure out which option is better. Now, is it worth paying the LMI of $20,000? Well, after year one, it pretty much knocks itself out. You know, you could have the increased equity and it's slightly higher, but in this case, the real difference comes after 10 years. It's the compounding effect. And after 10 years, we're actually ahead by $283,000. So if you think about it, the 20,000 that you went and paid towards LMI, you've gone ahead and got a greater than 10X return because that $20,000 allowed you to actually get access to the 283,000 in extra equity. And this is made possible because that deposit only allowed you to go and purchase one property. But if you went ahead and were okay paying the LMI, you effectively went and doubled your portfolio. And the thing is, when it comes to real estate, you've got those upfront costs. You've got stamp duty, you've got conveyance, you've got pest and build. And then you've got things like, even if you wanna pay a buyer's agent, you're always thinking about whether it's even any point because you're spending so much upfront, am I gonna get the value long-term? And that is something that you need to consider when you go on this journey of buying property yourself. A really big advantage of having a buyer's agent on your side without trying to sound so salesy is that you have the advantage of speed. I spoke to someone earlier this morning where they basically said, I've been looking for nine months and I still can't find anything. And the location they were looking at was exactly where we were buying. But in the nine months, they continued to see that price move further and further ahead. And they missed out on so many properties. In that same location, we've actually picked up about three or four off-market properties in just the last two or three months alone. So they could see the advantage of coming on board, paying that upfront fee. And if you you can secure something that actually grows as well as has the cash flow and not having the headache of actually having to do it yourself, they opted to go with the option of joining us at Search Property. The point I'm trying to make in this video is not so much about the buyer's agency. It's the fact that we get so drowned out by the upfront cost of something, we then avoid looking at the bigger picture. What we're trying to do is grow the machine and it's growing the machine by any means necessary and at speed because more time in the market is going to allow you to actually go and get financial freedom earlier. If you simply go, well, I'll do it next month, I'll do it next month, that's two or three months away from potentially financial freedom. When you add on top of that, the compounding growth factor, you're probably then wasting about a year or two years before you actually can retire. Now, if you made it all the way through, we've got the bonus, which is how the hell do you avoid LMI? I'm gonna show you right now. Now, again, this does not apply to every single bank and it definitely doesn't apply to every single person that's on this list, but it is a good place to start. I would essentially say for you to go ahead and speak to your lender, speak to your broker more likely, but more importantly, speak to a broker because they're gonna know exactly what package packages are available at different lenders. And that allows you to take advantage of not having to even pay the LMI, which is the $10,000 we've been arguing about in this video. So the following professions are generally eligible for an LMI waiver. And that would be lawyers, conveyances, doctors, surgeons, veterinarians, accountants, dentists, engineers, financial planners. To be eligible, you generally need to be earning at least $150,000 a year. Again, there's flexibility around this, so you should definitely consult with a broker. You also need to be a member of your industry's peak body or authority, such as the Australian Medical Association. Now, the reason why they have this, and it could be called the professional package at some banks, but what you can do is simply talk to the right person, get the right people around you. Again, build the right team, and this whole process is so much easier. We had a client that actually didn't know about this, so they were trying to avoid having to pay LMI. So by the time they actually came on board, they were like, oh, well, we had to wait an extra five months because we didn't want to pay LMI. And they said, well, you don't have to because you're a doctor. And they said, well, I wish someone told me that because I could have bought five months ago. And the point is listening to the right people as well as being able to execute when the time is right. Because these banks can change their rules whenever they like and they constantly change. So that's why having the right team is so important. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and hope you gained some clarity and some perspective on some upfront costs that might hinder you from actually building out the bigger picture, which is how do I build this machine? How do I build it as quickly as possible? And then let the market do its thing as you get to financial freedom. If you guys have enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe because I bring out videos every single day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.